Hello ladies, gentlemen, boys, girls, in his out ears and in between us. Welcome back to another PAP Reports. Today is Thursday the 20th of February 2020. And today we're going to start with an update on a report about poor Alan Hay, who died at the hands of Police Scotland staff, who mocked, laughed and called him names as he slowly died in pain while in police custody. 49-year-old Alan Hay was arrested on the 1st of August 2016 after a disturbance in Dalbeatie, Dumfrieshire, where officers used pepper spray to subdue him. He collapsed and died within six hours of leaving the police station and within one hour of arriving by transfer at Barlini uh, Prison in Glasgow. Hay was so neglected in a Dumfries police cell that he was left to lick spilled medicine off a plastic mattress to ease his pain. In her 122-page ruling after the fatal accident inquiry, Sheriff Linda Ruxton said the police officers could have spared Alan a great deal of suffering if they'd sent him to hospital when his condition deteriorated overnight. She said that officers were derogatory, mocking, offensive and insulting, and there was little genuine sympathy shown to a man seriously ill and in need of dire help. Now the family solicitor has now sent a letter to Police Scotland Chief Constable Ian Livingstone to request an investigation of the officers criticised. First Minister Sturgeon and Justice Secretary Hamza Youssef have also received a copy of the letter. Now the letter you can read for yourself rather than me reading it to you on here, I'm going to pop a link to that in the description. Needless to say that Police Scotland are being torn a new arsehole. A Scottish Government spokesperson said the thoughts of ministers remain with Mr Hayes' family and friends following this distressing incident and it is right that Police Scotland has apologised for the ordeal he suffered. It is clearly important that lessons are learned. Police Scotland has conducted an extensive review in light of this case and they will take forward a number of recommendations. Now whether or not anything is done about this is obviously another story but I'm sure I speak for all of us in wishing that Alan's family get the outcome that they want from this horrific and unnecessary incident. April the 20th last year was a horrendous day for the family of 18 year old Megan Newton after Joseph Trevor, the offspring of two former Staffordshire police constables, raped and stabbed Megan to death after she offered him a place to stay just hours after he was released from police custody. Trevor had been detained for possession of drugs in Newcastle under Lyme. Due to the incident, Staffordshire Police had referred themselves to the Independent Office for Police Conduct following Megan's murder on April the 20th last year, which is apparently standard practice when an incident occurs after the police have had recent contact with those involved. The IOPC then examined the case and, surprise surprise, decided not to launch a full investigation following a careful assessment However, Megan's mother, Sarah, has now criticised Staffordshire Police for releasing Trevor, leaving him at will to kill. She said questions need to be asked as to how Joseph came to be released before he killed and raped Megan and the police should be held accountable. If the police had done their jobs, she would be here today. Sarah also lashed out at police online saying Staffordshire Police should pay. He should never have been let out drugged and drunk. Detective Inspector Cheryl Hannon of Staffordshire Police's Major Crime Department said it was standard procedure to release Trevor after his arrest. She added, they were satisfied with his identity. He had no previous convictions. I support the officers who released him that night. They have not got a crystal ball. DI Hannon added, Trevor's offending was brutal. He walked away from the flat like a calm man with not a care in the world. On the day of Megan's death, Trevor, who had taken ketamine and possibly cocaine, was seen trying to hide a small bag of white powder in his trousers, and the police were called. He was then detained and taken to the police station for a search, before being released to continue his night out. It was said that Trevor was too scared to face his police staff parents, and out of kindness, Megan offered him a place to stay for the night. The two went back to Megan's, where Trevor proceeded to rape and then stab Megan nine times in the back. Trevor has this week been handed a life sentence with a minimum of 21 years to serve after pleading guilty to the murder and two charges of rape. An IOPC spokesman said, We received the referral from Staffordshire Police in April 2019 concerning the murder of Miss Newton. 
After careful assessment, we decided no investigation by the IOPC was required and returned for the referral to the police force. Staffordshire Commissioner Matthew Ellis said this was a tragic incident and my sympathies are with Megan's family. The IOPC has assessed this case and dealt with it accordingly. So, in other words, get off our back. We told you already you're not getting any justice out of the police, so we're not going to bother revisiting the complaint and actually take the time to investigate fully. Now, if you live in the West Midlands and you're criminally minded, then you should start to wear a hard hat whilst carrying out your criminal endeavours. After reports of hundreds of tasers that are being purchased for frontline police staff don't actually work. Now, obviously I'm joking about going to do anything criminal, but the fact remains that due to supposed funding issues, the police are only able to purchase the plastic unit out of their funding, with the police force being left to pick up the bill for the charges, the batteries, the holsters, safe storage facilities, and the training of officers to use them. Not that they spend much on training anyway. West Midlands Police currently has 1,200 police staff trained to use tasers, and the funding was discussed at a Strategic Policing and Crime Board meeting on Tuesday, February 18th, where Chief Constable Dave Thompson confirmed that the government grant only covered the cost of the unit. A spokesman for the Police and Crime Commissioner said, this meant the force would have to spend £668,200 to make the tasers fully functional and cover other costs. West Midlands Police and Crime Commissioner David Jameson said, the government's pledge to protect officers by providing £10 million for tasers is in tatters. Instead of providing forces with the equipment they need, the government are only providing a piece of plastic casing. Forces are having to fork out the rest. Last time I checked, a taser wasn't much use without a charger or batteries. I suppose officers could throw them at dangerous criminals, hence where the hard hat came in at the start of this report. As well as not providing the electric charges, the government are not contributing towards training, nor are they providing holsters or other crucial equipment for storing the devices. For every one pound police forces receive, they'll have to fork out a further three pound, meaning that the government's 10 million uh, grant is in fact costing cash strapped police forces 30 million. The government said that the funding would equip 10,000 officers in England and Wales. Home Secretary Priti Patel said, I've been completely appalled by the recent spate of serious assaults on police officers. How about the assaults by police officers? Which is why I'm giving Chief Constables the resources to dramatically increase the numbers of their officers who carry tasers. They keep us safe and now I'm giving them what they need to keep themselves safe on the job. Well, maybe it now also means that the public will be kept safe while the police are on the job, seeing as they're not out, not able to go and taser them willy-nilly. Northumbria Police have apologised over a near four-year delay in getting a sex offender to court, which has led to him ultimately walking free. In 2016, Mark Davidson confessed to police to inciting a teenage girl into sexual activity by asking for inappropriate pictures. Davidson posed online as a teenager on Instagram in 2016, but was released after his confession under police investigation, but did not appear in court until December 2019, almost four years later. A spokesperson for Northumbria Police said, Firstly, I would like to apologise for the clearly unacceptable delay in this case reaching court. As a force, we are committed to ensuring all cases reach court in a timely manner, and we'll review this case with our partners to ensure any learning points are taken forward. Well, Northumbria Police, I suppose you've said sorry. Clearly that's it for you. You can now, you can now allow yourself to be redeemed. Saying sorry is now a matter of course for the police rather than a matter of genuine remorse. The word means absolutely nothing coming from you or any police force because it's abundantly clear that none of you actually do learn from your mistakes. And it's also clear that none of you actually give a shit about your mistakes either. Judge Rippon said it were, Judge Rippon said were it not for the delay in the case, the sentence would have been immediate imprisonment. The judge told Davison, who has psychological problems and a low IQ, 
The offence took place four years ago. You were first interviewed within six months. You made full admission in interview. You were plainly released under investigation, as many defendants now are, and that can be the only explanation for your first hearing at this court being in December 2019. I have seen cases of delay, but cannot bring one to mind where the delay has been quite so extensive in a case where really all the boxes were ticked for it to have been in a court more quickly. Judge Rippon said, Davidson never met her, never tried to, and never would have due to his social inadequacies. So that very last sentence seems to me that although the judge has reprimanded the police for not getting their case into court quicker, the judge is actually trying to do some damage control by suggesting that Davidson wouldn't have met the girl anyway. How the fuck do you know? In fact, why are you saying something that cannot possibly be backed up in any way, shape or form? Judge Rippon, sitting at Newcastle Crown Court, gave Davidson a two year sentence, suspended for two years with program and rehabilitation requirements. He must also sign the sex offenders register and abide by a sexual harm prevention order for 10 years. Maybe when the judge described him as having social inadequacies with psychological problems and a low, low IQ, she felt sorry for him as he fits perfectly into the bracket of potential police material. Now this one is for my Scottish friends and is courtesy of Sad But Mad Lad and Shook One LDN who both sent me this story. But although this is for the Scottish viewers, it should be understood by all that this no doubt happens across the country. <laughs> Scotland. Did you know that the EU said that Scotland uh, could now end up as a third world country since Brexit? I mean, I don't know if things will improve to that extent, but I suppose you never know. Anyway, 1984 has well and truly landed on the far side of Adrian's wall because hundreds of jocks are being secretly placed on police databases for telling offensive jokes. Not quite sure who determines whether they're offensive or not. Now, maybe they just deem them to be offensive if they're posted by certain people rather than the content of the joke itself. Or maybe they just understand that all jocks are offensive and so log all the jokes. Anyway, Police Scotland has logged more than 3,300 hate incidents such as sharing offensive jokes on social media, even though they involve no criminality at all. However, in the process of doing so, labelling you as a criminal without your knowledge. It's said that officers currently go by official guidelines. There's that word again that means something different to every copper. Which state jokes appearing to be motivated by hostility towards race, religion, or a person being transgender, are filed irrespective of whether there is any evidence to identify the hate element. I think police really need to tighten up on guidelines to prevent them from being interpreted differently by every police constable. Now talking of tight, you would think that being tight comes naturally to the Scots. I mean, I have a Scottish mate who's so tight he attacks the police just to get tasered to charge his fucking iPhone. But seriously, this can affect you in serious ways as any information logged could appear on disclosure checks uh, and handed to employers if the police deem it relevant to a job you're applying for. And that's no laughing matter. Although jocks with a job, I suppose, is quite funny. A Freedom of Information request showed that 858 of these non-crime incidents were uploaded to Scottish police systems last year. That's the equivalent of more than two per day. In England and Wales, almost 120,000 cases were logged by 34 police forces over the same time period. Comedian and former radio presenter Fred McCauley blasted the practice, branding it a waste of police time, which clearly it is. Index on Censorship Editor-in-Chief Rachel Jolly said people were potentially having their basic human rights taken away. She said, speech that breaks no law is being investigated in a way that stifles people's freedom to express themselves and has the potential to close down debate because of fear of what may end up on their record. Human rights include our rights to have opinions and sometimes those may be upsetting to others, but in a free and open and healthy society, we must be able to express opinions to, that others disagree with. 
Hate crime operational guidance also permits officers to identify a hate incident even when the victim or others do not. Meaning that you could be labeled far right because let's face it, that's what they're trying to do here without evidence, proof, or even a statement to the fact that your offense is hate related, which truly does make the police judge, jury, and executioner. Personally, I've got nothing against the jocks. In fact, people often ask me why my favorite Scott is Robert the Bruce. So I tell them, because he's dead. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. Big thank you if you were mentioned for sending me a, a link. You know who you are. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Let me know your thoughts, as I know many of you will. And until next time, stay safe, look after each other, film the police and other officials. Oh yeah, one last thing. Don't tell jokes online. Good night, all. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you like the content and you'd like to help support the channel, you can do so. In the description of every video, there are some links to ways that you're able to help support the channel so I can continue putting out content. If you're unable to help us in that way, hit that subscribe button up the top there. If you haven't already, become a subscriber. That is support enough. Share the videos, comment, like, it all helps. If you're looking for something else to watch, up top there is my latest video. Down the bottom there is a video that YouTube recommends for you.